welcome to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelzer, and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexter Pelzer. He's not here today, but he's on traveling on the East Coast, amen. But we have a wonderful show for you based on Matthew 3.17, which I think it will transform the way that you walk in the Lord and your relationship with God. And I want to read Matthew 3, 17 for you because Ma the, the scripture led me to ask myself a very analytical question that require the examination of my spiritual walk. Amen. And the scripture says, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son, of course, is referring to Jesus, whom I love with him, and I am well pleased. The last sentence, I am well pleased, just stroke my heart and, and said, wow, Jesus lived in such a way that he pleased the Father to the point that he said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And that is the title of this program. And this scripture, you know, the scripture, when we read it, we need to point it to us and we need to use it to examine our lives. And it led Dexter and myself to ask the question, do we know and believe we are God's sons and daughters in whom he is well pleased? Is the Lord well pleased in the way we are living our lives, in the way that we represent him? Because remember, we are ambassadors of Christ, and we're called to be imitators of Christ. So it caused me to do a lot of inner searching and, and to think, well, what are the things that please God? And what are the things that are not pleasing to the Lord? Um, and I think that our main goal in life is to please the Father, amen, to please the Lord in the same way that Jesus Christ did. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 5, 9, and I want to read that to you. Um, and it says, So, we make it our goal to please him, who the Father, whether we are at home in the body or are away from it. Wow. So we have to live our lives in such a way that is pleasing unto the Lord. And in order to do that, we have to live according to the precepts and mandates of the word. And we have to live also According to Romans 8, 14, that says those that are led by the spirit are the true sons and daughters of God. Amen. Um, and part of that is to die to yourself and, 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 be, and take on the attributes and the nature of God as we read the word and the word is activated in our lives and it transforms us from the inside out. And we die to our Adamic nature and, and we're born again. And then we grow in the sanctification and the process of holiness that the Lord has for you. And, you know, and it's amazing because in Philippians 1, 21, it says to die to self is gain. And it is so true. So we have to die to our carnal nature and walk in the spirit so that we're able to please the Lord. Okay. So when we accept Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives in each one of us who are his true followers uh, of Christ. And then he starts a work in our lives, a work of sanctification um, that we begin to change um, and to grow and become mature in the Lord. And that is so important that we examine the traits and the character of Jesus because we're called to be imitators of Christ um, because Jesus pleased the Father, 
okay? So we want to please the Father too. Um, and some of the things that Jesus did was he was totally obedient to the Father's will, okay? Even though he was fully God, he surrendered his deity to be a man and to fulfill the plan and to die as a sacrificial lamb to atone for our sins. So he was obedient unto death, okay? And we see that that was not an easy thing to do. And, and we see that, that in the Garden of Gethsemane. He always gave all the honor and the glory to the Father in all things. And we should do the same thing. Give all the glory, all the honor to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And, and it's not I, but Christ in us. It's not what I do. It's not how talented I am. It's not how anointed I am. Because none of that is mine. Everything is him and me. Amen. And, and we have to give all the glory, all the honor to the Lord. And that pleases him, just like Jesus did, okay? Um, he honored the Holy Spirit. We have to honor the Holy Spirit by being obedient to his voice, okay? Um, and always giving credit to the Holy Spirit for the miracles, signs, and wonders when they happen. Now, oh, I'm anointed. I didn't know. We, I don't do anything. If I pray for somebody and they get healed, I was just the vehicle that God used to bless that person because the gifts and the anointings are to bless, to edify the church, and to confirm the gospel with miracles, signs, and wonders. It's not anything that we do. It's we're just vehicles, vessels for God's glory. Amen? Um, and it is amazing, okay? And another thing that Jesus did that pleased the Father, he was always in fellowship and communion with the Father. He always went to pray for the, to the mountain. And I have the privilege of being around anointed people that the Lord uses mightily, like Brother Carlos Anacondia, who was used mightily in the Argentine revival. He always went to the mountain to pray. My spiritual mom, Mary Kay Baxter, is a woman of prayer. My husband is a man of prayer because in prayer, you receive revelation, you receive instructions, you receive guidance. God teaches you, God examines you, so he convicts you. It's a fellowship and a communion that God uses to bless you and, and to mold you to what he wants you to become. So you got to stay connected to him tremendously and, and go to the quiet place with the Lord, amen. To, that, to, to the place of fellowship and intimacy with him. Amen? Um, he finished the race. He was faithful. He knew what the plan was, the, uh, the, the plan of the Lord for his life, and he was faithful to stay in it. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Right? So God has plans for you. And that word plans in the Greek is thoughts. So God has thoughts and things that he created us to do for us to fulfill. So when we're faithful to walk, not in the permissible will, but in the perfect will of God, we be, we're just like Christ and we're just so blessed, okay? Um, one of the things that Jesus did, he always guarded and protected and kept his brothers and sisters while he was here on the earth. And then he's now sitting at the right hand of the Father continuing to intercede for us and he sent the holy spirit who's the paraclete and our helper to empower us so he was loving and he mentored he loved the people around him he wanted to um, speak into their lives to be a blessing to them amen um that's important so now i want to start looking at some of the scriptures that help us to live lives that please the Father. Amen. And um, this is part one of this teaching. I'm going to do part two in the Arabic program because it's a very, very long teaching. So, um, so when you look at it in the YouTube channel, um, pleasing the Father part one and pleasing the Father part two so that you'll get 
both um, parts of the teaching. Amen. Let's go to First Thessalonians, chapter four, one to nine. Okay. So we need to be understand and be instructed, and in how to please the Father, and that is revealed in the scriptures. Amen. So, and chapter four is all about living to please God, okay? Um, living in such a way and walking in, in a such a way that we are pleasing the Lord and that we're living according to his standards and, and, and walking in the fullness of his love, being the salt of the world and, 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 and just by our testimony, being a blessing to people, amen? So let's look at chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians 1 through 9. Amen. It says, Finally, brothers, we instructed you how to live in order to please God. As in fact, you are living. Okay? So here they're saying, we taught you how to live in such a way that pleases God and you're walking in it, okay? So now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. We want you to continue to grow and do it more, fully, abundantly live in this manner, okay? For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus, okay? So this was revealed to the apostles, the writers of this book, by the authority of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit to empower us to live in such a way that would please the Lord, okay? And here is the instructions. It is God's will. So if it is God's will, it's this perfect will, that you should be sanctified. Glory to God. That you should be holy right because the word says be holy for i am holy and without holiness nobody will see the lord right and and then and look what it's required to be holy that you should avoid sexual immorality right that each of you should learn to control his own body okay in a way that is holy and honorable not in passionate lust, like the heathens, like the people that do, know, do not know the Lord, amen, who do not know God, and that in this matter nobody should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. The Lord will punish men for all such so if God's going to punish you for these sins, that means they're not pleasing to him, okay? As we have already told you and warned you. So the scripture is warning us that if we are walking in immorality, that we are controlled by our flesh and our passions, and that if we take advantage of other people, we're going to be admonished and we're going to be punished by God from heaven, okay? Um, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. We're all called to live a holy life. Wow. Just as Jesus did. Therefore, he who rejects these instructions does not reject man, but God. Okay? So if you live in immorality, you live taking advantage of people, you live controlled by the flesh, in essence, you are rejecting the Lord himself who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now, about brotherly love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. So they're doing good in, in, in loving each other, but they're not doing good in the other area. So let, let's unpack this a little bit. We're called to be set apart. We're called to be different, right? Um, we're called not to compromise our walk with God because we want to please men. 
Um, we cannot compromise God's holiness and his, the truth of his word. Um, we can never lower our standards. We cannot follow the trends of society. It doesn't matter what society says is acceptable. If it's not acceptable and if it doesn't please God, it should not be in our lives. Amen? Because we want to live a life that pleases the Lord, okay? So we need to avoid sexual immorality, adultery, fornication, masturbation, lust, all those things, okay? Having sex out of marriage, okay? Adulterous affairs, right? We need to control our bodies. In, they need to be holy and honorable. We cannot be controlled by our flesh. We cannot react. We need to be self-control. We, um, we need to live balanced lives. We need to be peacemakers. We need to control our eating. We need to control um, our thoughts, okay? The word says to um, take your, cap your thoughts captive, okay? So we need to be self-controlled in Jesus' name. We do not need to take advantage of our sisters and brothers. We need to be honest in our business dealings and, 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 and have integrity in the altar and, 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 and the way we make a living. We can deceive people. We got to be honorable and honest, okay? Because um, we're called to be pure, okay? And that is so, so important. So then... I want to go to 1 Timothy 2, 1, and 3 because it talks about um, being instructed in worship. Our lives are a sacrificial offering unto God. We not only worship him when we go to church and we sing songs, but we also worship him with our actions, by the things that we live every day. We have to live sacrificial lives um, because we honor him 24-7 and we worship him, and we represent him. So we need to understand that, okay? So let's go to 1 Timothy 2, 1, 2, 3, okay? And I'm preaching this to myself, too, because sometimes I have a temper, you know? So let's read this, okay? We need to do the things that are good and acceptable unto the Lord. And here we have instructions on worship. It says, I urge you then... First of all, that request, prayer, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. So we need to be praying for everyone, all those people in, in, in our spheres of life, okay? And it says, for kings and those in authority. We need to be praying for our president, for the vice president, for our senate, for our pastors, for our boss, for all those people that have authority over us, okay? And then it says, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So when we pray for the people in authority in our nation, the result is that we're going to live what? In peace and in quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And it says, this is good and pleases God our Savior. So if you want to please the Lord, start praying for all the people in authority around you. Amen. Because that is good and acceptable to the Lord. Amen. That's a wonderful. And the, it will yield peace. Amen. Now, Another thing that the Lord delights in, it's um, people that are humble, that are teachable, and that obey the Lord. Let's go to Psalm 51, okay? And I have the blessing of having some people in my life that are humble, and that I've learned so much from them, okay? Um, the Word says that God rejects the proud, but he gives favor to the humble. And I've seen that 
be evident. Now, let's go to Psalm 51, 16 through 17. Amen? Let's read that. It's, the Word of God is so rich. We get so much wisdom. We're getting wisdom in how to live lives that please the Father. Amen? It says, You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. You know, in the Old Testament, when people used to sin, the Israelites, they would bring an offering to the temple to atone for their sins, right? So here, it, the, the writer of the psalm is saying, you don't delight in these things. So, so what, are, what is a true sacrifice to God? Let's read. The, sac the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. So when you have a broken spirit and a contrite heart, a, a heart that is humble, that when God shows you that your ways are wicked and that that person repents, truly repents from the heart, not because they got caught, but because they, they have godly sorrow and repentance and they're really contrite and they say, Lord, forgive me. God is so pleased by that. And what happens, he doesn't despise you. I experienced that this, um, this weekend. I was at church, and the move of the Spirit was powerful. And, um, and you know, when the Spirit starts moving, you get convicted, you know, because I'm not perfect. So I got convicted. So I started repenting to the Lord, and, and, and I repented, and I was crying. And when I was repenting, that I finished repenting, um, I was asking the Lord. I thought he was going to admonish me and all this. And you know what he, he said to me? He dropped it in my spirit. He says, I love you. He demonstrated his love for me and his mercy and his kindness. And it was so amazing. I felt so forgiven. I felt his mercy. I felt his compassion. And it was such a blessing to me. Amen. God. You know, that pleases God more than anything else. Okay. And, you know, in Psalm 147, it says something very powerful. It tells us what God delights in. So let's go there. Psalm 147, 10 and 11. Amen. Praise God. It says, his pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of men. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Wow. Ooh. We have to fear God. And, and because fear is the beginning of wisdom. And when we fear him and we have reverence, to him and we realize how wonderful and how mighty and how powerful he is and that he's our daddy and, and that if we truly repent and we are, have broken hearts, he just bestows this mercy and this kindness to us, then he's our hope. You know, Jesus is our hope and hope is an anchor for the Christian, amen? Because we, our hope is in Christ. Because in, in him, we're totally secure in his unfailing love. Wow. It is so amazing and it's so encouraging. Um, and we need to understand that, okay? Um, we need to understand, you know, um, in Hebrews eleven six 6, it says, that without faith is impossible to please God. And that he rewards those who diligently seek him. So when we diligently seek him, he teaches us the things that please him, and then he rewards us. So we need to understand that and we need to walk in that. I want to go to Ezekiel 1823. Okay. 
Let's go there a second. And I want to read this to you. It says, he says, do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the sovereign Lord. Rather, I am not pleased when they turn from their ways and live. God wants to, for us to turn from our wicked ways. Because nothing pleases us more when we diligently seek him, when we stop being controlled by the flesh and we begin to be controlled by the spirit. Because then we receive eternal life. That's for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So to what? To give us salvation, the redemption plan. God is is a merciful and loving God, but we have to seek him and we have to have faith in him, okay? And so we need to be imitators of Christ and live according to the word so that we can please the Lord and that we can receive a crown of life, amen? So I'm gonna pray. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for your word, Lord. Lord, I, I ask you that we might live lives that are pleasing unto you, Lord. Father, I, I ask you, Father, to, 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 to have the Holy Spirit help us to control our flesh. That, Lord, open our ears and our eyes and our understanding to hear clearly, to see clearly, and, and to understand clearly what your word says and what the Spirit of God is telling each of us, Father. Father, we want to be guided by the Spirit, Lord. We want to be imitators of Christ. We want to be pleasers of you, Lord. We want to walk in your perfect will, Father. Lord, we want to please you because we love you. Lord, we love you. And, and out of that love, we want to please you. Like we want to please somebody that we love. Lord, we just love you. And, and we just thank you, Father, for your love for us. Because you loved us first, Lord. And I just thank you, Father, that you're going to empower people by, by the power of the resurrection to live lives to please you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can go under shalomshalom.org. And I also want to invite you to go to our Facebook page. Uh, it's called Shalom Shalom TV Ministry. And also um, subscribe to our Facebook page. And I have a next week um, will be... Um, Brother Dexter will be here, and we will be releasing our book that we wrote. Amen? And it's going to be wonderful. So don't miss next week. This has been your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, and my husband, Reverend Dexter Pelser. God bless you, and see you next time. Shalom.